And let's go to John McCain's uh, headquarters out in Phoenix, Arizona right now. Dana Bash is there. Uh, Dana, this is uh, obviously very disappointing news for, uh, for Senator McCain. Pennsylvania first, now Ohio. And like uh, Candy and Suzanne, you travel to those states a lot. A lot. And, you know, it is absolutely crushing uh, for John McCain, this news. I, I got to tell you, in following John McCain throughout Ohio, last week in particular, we spent two whole days there riding a bus through pretty much all of the state. At every single stop, Wolf, he would tell people, I know my history. And the history, uh, history is that uh, no Republican has ever won the, won the White House without winning this state. He knows what this means historically, and given the way the other states have gone, uh, that this is very, very tough for him. And, and this is now and day. This is now day three. You have statements that my office has put out, but they don't answer the question. There are statements that, that, I, that my office has put out. And there are going to be people who are going to want, look, this is the tactic. The guy in the back of the room who's throwing the pie or yelling out the insult wants that to be the conversation. But you are I the am, one who said Dana, let, let me, I, that you were hacked. Uh, and, Dana, that's, and that's a criminal a potential Dana, crime. Dana, let me, I'm going to have to ha ask that we follow some rules here. And one of those is going to be U.S. questions. I do the answers. That seem reasonable. I'd love to get an answer. That, that, that would be reasonable, right? So, Dana, you really did have to literally chase the congresswoman down. What did she tell you? Well, I should say, Anderson, the last time I ran after Michelle Bachman on one of those other issues that you listed, I told you that the bad news is she can walk very fast in heels. The good news is so can I. But <laughs> this time she was moving so fast, I have to tell you, it tested my endurance. Uh, I told the Congresswoman I wanted to talk to her about her speech at CPAC, about questionable accusations she made about the president's lavish lifestyle. Here's how it went. What I want to ask you about is the fact that you said that he had, you talked about the excesses that he's engaged in, the fact that he has a dog walker, which is not true. The, the big point of my speech was about Benghazi. This was an absolute disaster. But you also made specific said, accusations about the, the president spending State money that other presidents Dana, also made. The real issue is there are four Americans that are dead. The Secretary of State was not in conversation with the Secretary of Defense or with the chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. I think that's an she important was not point. There. I think and that's an important, important point, but this is, is another. The President of the United States didn't care about those four Americans and they were killed. That's the point. And but if you've got to focus. But if you want to focus on that, then what? If that's that's you it. You want to focus on what did you bring you up the other talk things? About dog handlers? And there's four Americans but, killed? But, but Congresswoman, you're the, but you're the one who brought it up. These Americans. You're the one who brought it up. Now, Anderson, to be fair, Congresswoman Bachman doesn't always answer my questions, but she does usually smile and she's polite. This was, in that sense, a bit out of character for her. It, it is. I don't know what other word I can use. They are obsessed with this Obamacare thing. It's, work, it's working now and it'll continue to work and people will love it even more than they do now by far. So they have no right to pick and choose. Um, but if you can help one child who has cancer, why wouldn't you do it? Listen. Why pick what, one what, against what, the other? What, why, why would we want to do that? I, yeah. ha, I have 1,100 people at Nellis Air Force Base that are sitting home. They have, they have a few problems of their own. This is to have someone of your intelligence suggest such a thing maybe means you're ir irresponsible. And reckless. Yes. Now, Brooke, to be clear, I was playing the devil's advocate. This is, uh, I think, a legitimate question. We are glad you asked the question, Dana Bash. You are a journalist. It's your job to see both sides and ask about both sides. Dana, thank you. Mitch McConnell, your leader in Washington, says it's not going to happen again. There will be no government shutdown ever again as far as he's concerned. And he hopes that the newer members, like you, you've been in Washington only 10 months, have learned a lesson. Doesn't sound like you've learned a lesson, Senator. Well, I'll tell you, the lesson I've learned is, is that what we've seen the last couple of months has been extraordinary. We have seen millions of Americans rise up. Over two million Americans signed a national petition at DontFundIt.com and melted the phone lines down at Capitol Hill. Just a couple of months ago, official Washington scoffed that that might happen is a lot of pressure here on Capitol Hill from constituents who are getting these calls, getting these letters, saying their policies are canceled. We don't know what to do because we can't get on the Obamacare website and a real panic. So that panic turned into pressure and frustration being voiced in a very aggressive way, we've been told and been reporting for the past couple of days by congressional Democrats to the White House saying, you've got to do something. You've got to help us fix this. So this was supposed to be an easy win for the Republicans. What happened? 
It was. It was supposed to be a sure bet in their bid to try to retake control of the Senate in November. But much to, to the chagrin of national Republicans, their candidate here just hasn't been able to put it away, giving opportunity to his opponents. My boat's not for sale or rent. I just won't listen to the one percent. Democrat Rick Wyland singing for his U.S. Senate seat. Definitely not a usual tactic. Well, it's, uh, it's definitely creative, but it's also who I am. He hardly has the corner on creativity in the South Dakota Senate race. But this is a cowboy. Who's Independent Larry Pressler reads cowboy poetry. Your friend just might have to take you on home or remind you something that you're not alone. You're trying to send a signal about who you yes. are in this race. Yes, yes, who I am. I want to work with both sides. Neither of these quirky candidates was supposed to stand a chance. This open Democratic seat was going to be an easy GOP pickup. What happened? We continue to tell them the same thing. Number one, South Dakota is a purple state. You take nothing for granted. But Wyland is trying to keep it local and personal. I want to get there on my own terms. I don't need the president of the United States. I don't really need the Democratic Party. Wyland is a populist. Some national Democrats worry too liberal for South Dakota. You're a left of center with your views, and this is a right of center state. See, that's the national conventional wisdom. Still, Washington Democrats are hedging their bets. Independent Pressler, a former three term GOP senator, won't say who he would caucus with, but doesn't sound Republican. You support Obamacare, which is anathema, which is anathema to most Republicans. Uh, yes, but, but isn't it strange, because had Romney won the election, it would be called Romney Care, and then all the Republicans would have loved it. His shoestring campaign touts his integrity with this ad. Good evening. Listen to the A 30-year-old report from Walter Cronkite on Pressler refusing to take a bribe in the app scam scandal made famous by the movie American Hustle. Just one more reason this offbeat race I'm running if I is so in flux. And there is a fourth candidate, a Tea Partier named Gordon Howie. He's not getting much traction, Jake, but even just a few points away from the Republican candidate rounds uh, could hurt his chances even more. And of course, that would mean hurting GOP chances to retake the Senate. As I know, believe that the president continues to act on his own. He is going to poison the will. When you play with matches, uh, you take the risk of burning yourself. And he's going to burn himself. Uh, if he continues to go down this path. The American people made a clear election day. They want to get things done, uh, and they don't want the president acting on a unilateral basis. Mr. Speaker, how do you expect the president to trust that you really want to work together when out of the gate you say that you want to repeal his signature law that you know has no chance of getting a veto-proof majority? How do you expect him to trust you? Trust you? Listen, my job is to listen to the American people. The American people have made it clear they're not for Obamacare. 